and a hack driver. So this lawyer, he's gone to this small town to find Mr. Rifkins because he is an important witness. It's a very simple story, but it gives us a message that sometimes we feel that because I'm highly educated, because I've studied so much, I am much smarter than other people, okay? But there is something, you know, what we call as a street smartness, which necessarily does not come with education. When you go out, you face the world, you learn so many things. And sometimes when you have to struggle every day, when you have to make so many efforts here to survive, you become much smarter. So here this lawyer has gone to find Mr. Rutkins because he's required uh, for, you know, like an important uh, case he requires him. Now, will he be able to find him? And who is this person? Who is Mr. Rutkins? This is what the story is about. Okay, right? So we just start here. All of you look at your book. And uh, as we read, I'll carry on with the explanation. So why is the lawyer sent to New Malians? What does he first think about the place? Right? And uh, yes, uh, who befriends him? Where does he take him? And what does he say about Lutkins? Are they able to find Lutkins? And why aren't they able to find him? This is one very important question, okay? Bhavin, look at your book. Which page is it? Which page? Found it? Okay. Go there, sit there. Sit there, sit there, sit down, sir, please. No. After graduating with honors, I became a junior assistant clerk in a magnificent law firm. So once again, here we think I have studied from the best institute. I've got the degree. And uh, yes, I'm earning in the lakhs and all. So I think I'm the best person, the most smartest person. But sometimes we are not. There are so many lessons that life teaches us. And this is one very important lesson that the lawyer is going to learn, which no university can teach him. So sometimes we learn by committing mistakes. We learn by being a part of the world around us. This is one very important message, which this chapter tells. I was sent not to prepare legal briefs, but to serve summons like a cheap private detective. Now this young lawyer, he thinks I have graduated. I've got my degree. I have come from the best uh, law college. So my job is to start at the top. But when you want to reach the top, you have to start by doing small things, isn't it? Right? So you should know everything about that uh, job that you have taken up. So he thinks that why are they sending me to serve these summons? This is not my job, right? So why am I doing it? So he's very surprised, okay? Like a private detective. I had to go to dirty and shadowy corners of the city to seek out my victim. So he was sent all over the place to find out his victims. Some of the larger and more self-confident ones even beat me up. So it's not easy being a lawyer. I mean, you're sending out notices to people. So some of them beat, beat him up also. They were very violent at times. I hated this unpleasant work and the side of city life it revealed to me. That, yes, everybody is not nice. We come to know about that, isn't it? So never take anybody at their face value. So sometimes the people who appear to be nicest are the worst. Isn't it? Right? Okay. I hated this unpleasant work and the side of city life it revealed to me. I even considered fleeing to my hometown where I could have been a real lawyer. So like because you've done your, your MBBS, it does not mean that you've done your uh, you know, master's and all. Okay, now you start with a surgery. No, you start with basic things, with diagnosing, with scrubbing and all. Isn't it right? And gradually you will reach that position where you might be able to handle a surgery independently. Okay? Like here, the lawyer, what is he taught first? How are the things done? 
you have to give notices to the people you have to give them summons you have to call these people to the court right so he said why am i doing all this work now he thinks of i even considered fleeing to my hometown where i could have been a real lawyer right away without going through this unpleasant training period so i rejoiced one day when they sent me out 40 miles in the country to a town called new malian to serve summons on a man called oliver witkins we needed this man as a witness in a law case and he had ignored all our letters so the court here or the firm had been sending letters to this man again and again but he did not respond mehul which book is that where's your book right so here he's very happy this young man at least i won't be having to go to all these corners of the city i'm going to a new place which place is he going to new malians and who is he going to call oliver lutkins okay very good when i got to new malian my eager expectations of a sweet and simple country village were severely disappointed we think okay village people are simple isn't it that is what we believe is it true no no and people think that okay city people are very smart is everybody smart no some are simpletons so both ways we are not uh, you know right uh, to be prejudiced so much its streets were rivers of mud with rows of wooden shops first thing we think that okay it might be a very beautiful place very neat and clean he went over there he was disappointed what did he see over there streets were rivers of mud why yeah kachi ras absolutely correct with rows of wooden shops either painted a saw brown or bare of any paint at all so the shops were there not nicely painted and looking very dull the only agreeable sight about the place was the delivery man at the station so there was this person who was taking everybody around he was about 40 red faced cheerful and thick about the middle healthy looking person 40 year old his working clothes were dirty and well worn and he had a friendly manner you felt at once that he liked people so very friendly person he came to meet because otherwise he was very disappointed he saw the village the road so dirty the shops not nice but he met one man right and he felt very happy to see him he seemed quite friendly i want i told him to find a man named oliver lutkins i saw him around here about half an hour ago hard fellow to catch though always up to something or the other he's probably trying to start up a poker game in the back of fridge's shop i'll tell you boy is there any hurry about locating lutkins so the lawyer thinks he's very smart right but he is going to be proved otherwise so he tells that man i'm looking for a person oliver lutkins the man said yes he was here and this man is not easy to catch so he's gone there maybe to the shop to start a poker game right so he's gone over there fridge's shop the name of that person so let's uh, is there any hurry yes i want to catch the afternoon train back to the city i was what's the word here very important yes i was very important and secret about it so he wants to show that i'm on a very important mission you know like i have to catch this man i'll tell you what i've got a hack so what is the hack you can look in the picture hack kya hai the horse and carriage okay so i have that i'll get it out and we can drive around together and find lookins i know most of the places he hangs out so imagine you are there you've gone to a new place you don't know where to find this man and someone is coming and telling you i'll help you how will you feel happy and that person is also quite a jovial person he seems to be a friendly person so you're going to feel okay this person is so helpful this person is so kind and he's also offered to take him on his hack right what is the hack here the horse and 
carriage, right? So he's going to take him around and help him find, who are they finding? Oliver Lutkins, okay. He was so open and friendly that I glowed with the warmth of his affection. I knew, of course, that he wanted the business, but his kindness was real. So he's very, you know, touched by this man. How kind, how nice. But of course, he's saying, naturally, I'm going to pay him for this, uh, right? The whole day I'm with him. So he's, uh, he will be there, you know, like getting money for it. So he's not helping me for free. I was glad the fair money would go to this good fellow. So the company is going to pay him the money and he's uh, happy that, okay, this good person will get the money. And then he bought from his house nearby a sort of large black box on wheels. He remarked, well, young man, he has the courage and his wide smile made me into an old friend. These villagers are so ready to help a stranger. He had already made it his own task to find Oliver Lutkins for me. Now, when we discuss this chapter, I want you to think of a phrase. You know, you come across many <coughs> red herrings. Herrings, a kind of fish, red herrings. What would red herrings appear like in the water? Red, obviously. And that red color would be very right? And you might not look at the other fish. You might be attracted because of the red color, right? And you'll ignore others. So red herrings, it is, uh, you know, like an idiom that we don't take or we look at the obvious things and miss other things. Now, if you are a lawyer here, right? If you are there, you know, you went going to call out someone for a case, Will you tell everybody, I have to find Oliver Lutkins, he's a witness. Would you do that? You'll keep it secret? Yes, you'll not make it known to the world. So this is one thing wrong that the lawyer did, right? He's told the true purpose of his coming, okay? Why did he do that? Because he thought this man is very friendly. And so he thought this man might be very... And of course, it has turned out to be that, uh, yes, the hack driver was quite concerned and was quite helpful. Now let's see what happens here. So please remember this, we'll be discussing about the red herrings here. He was uh, so, yes, but his kindness was real. Here's the village, okay, we read this. He said, I don't want to interfere young fellow, but my guess is that you want to collect some money from Lutkins? He never pays anybody a cent. You've come here because you have to collect money from him. He owes you money. He still owes me 50 cents on a poker game. What is poker? What kind of a game is poker? Poker is a card game. Poker is a card game. Okay. So you play for money. So that means, uh, yes. So here also he has uh, lost money and he owes money and he has not paid it, right? So he's saying, thinking that, okay, maybe you have also come because you want to take money from him. He owes you money, right? I collect some money from, uh, he never pays anybody a cent. He still owes me 50 cents on a poker game. I was fool enough to play with him. He's not really bad, but it's hard to make him part with his money. So what kind of a person is he? He's a miserly person. He does not give money easily. If you try to collect from him in those fancy clothes, he'll be suspicious and get away from you. So you are there all nicely dressed up. You've come from the city. And if you want to meet him, he'll say, he'll immediately guess that you've come to take money from him. Okay. If you want, I'll go into Fritz's and ask for him. And you can keep out of sight behind. So you stay outside. Don't come in. Because if he sees you, he'll never give money, right? So let me go inside and ask, okay? I loved him for this. By myself, I might never have found Lutkins. With the hack drivers, knowing help, I was sure of getting my man. I took him into my confidence and told him that I wanted to serve the summons on Lutkins. He's gone inside and he's meeting that person. So he told him that I have not come to collect money. I have to serve a summons. What is a summons? It's a letter from the court. 
right asking him to appear as a witness so he has to appear in court right and that the man had refused to be a witness when his information would have quickly settled our case so this man is quite clever the driver listened earnestly at the end he hit me on the shoulder and laughed well we'll give brother lukins a little surprise so let's surprise him let's start driver most folks around here call me bill or magnuson my business is called william magnuson fancy carting and hacking so who is the driver who is the hack driver what's his name magnuson bill magnuson or william magnuson okay right all right bill shall we proceed to frizz's yes lukins is just as likely to be there as anyway plays a lot of poker he's good at deceiving people bill seemed to admire lukins talent for dishonesty i feel that if he had been a policeman he would have caught lukins respectfully and jailed him with regret that he so you know like talking about him kaise bahut admiration ke sath that this person is very good at cheating people so he would not have made a good policeman maybe bill led me into frizz's what is uh, this place frizz's what would lukins be doing there poker yes playing poker frizz uh, have you seen oliver lukins around today friend of his looking for him said bill cheerily see how helpful he is he's gone inside have you seen uh, lukins fritz looked at me hiding behind bill he hesitated then admitted yes he was in here a little while ago guess he's gone over to gustavs to get a chair he came here but now he's not here where is he gone he's gone to get a chair well if he comes in tell him i'm looking for him we drove to gustav's barber shop again bill went in first and i lingered at the door please note the method which bill is adopting is bill allowing him to enter any shop no bill is going first talking to the person and then he's coming out and conveying the message okay right again bill went in first and i lingered at the door he asked not only the sweet but two customers if they had seen lutkins just to be safe he asked him he asked the customers also have you seen lutkins the sweet had not he said angrily i haven't seen him and don't care to but if you find him you can just collect that 35 that dollar 35 he owes me so one thing we have learned about lutkins what is it What have we learned about him? Lutkins is helpful. Who is Lutkins? The, the man they are looking for. Bill is the driver. Bill Magnuson is the driver. So Lutkins, he owes people money. Yes, yes, and never pays them back, right? So he owes the barber money. He owes the poker shop owner, Fritz, also money. Yes, Mr. Majood, what did you say? no yeah okay he's a cheat he's a cheat he's a clever person he's a dishonest person okay one of the customers thought he had seen lutkins walking down main street this side of the hotel now see they've got another person telling him we wahan jaate hue dekha usko as we climbed back into the hack bill concluded that since lutkins had exhausted his credit at gustavs he had probably gone to grace for a shave so gustav is the barber right lutkins went there but now uh, the barber is not giving him any more loan so he's going to another shop who is that shop grace shop i haven't seen him and i don't care to but if you okay where is it at grace barber shop we miss lutkins by only 5 minutes he had just left probably for the pool room at the pool room it appeared that he had just bought a pack of cigarettes and gone out so we pursued him just behind him but never catching him for an hour till it was past 1 o'clock i was hungry 
but I had so enjoyed Bill's rough country opinions about his neighbors that I scarcely cared whether I found Lutkins or not. So yes, uh, they have gone to many places. What was uh, the you know like explanation they got? Yes, that he was here. He's gone to some other place. So they were chasing Lutkins all over the place. It seems they were just five minutes behind, right? So the whole morning passed like that, and it was one o'clock, almost lunchtime. But was the lawyer tired? Was he, you know, like upset? No, because he had such a nice companion. Okay. Any questions, anyone? No? So now if you have questions, you can ask me later on. How about something to eat? I suggested. Let's go to a restaurant and I'll buy you lunch. Why is the lawyer so generous? I'll buy you lunch. Why is he saying that? Who's going to pay him? His firm is going to pay him. So he says, never mind, we can spend the whole day finding good kids and I can buy you lunch also. Well, I ought to go home to the wife. I don't care much for these restaurants, only four of them and they're all bad. Tell you what we'll do. We'll get the wife to pack up a lunch for us. She won't charge you more than half a dollar and it would cost you more for a greasy meal in a restaurant. And we'll go up to Wayne's Hill and enjoy the view while we eat. So, right. So, yes, the lawyer is ready to pay for the lunch. But what does uh, Bill suggest? That I can go home. My wife could pack a lunch for you. And if you want to, you can pay for it. Right. And the lunch will be healthier because it's homemade and much cheaper than what you're going to buy at the restaurant. Yes, uh, what are the places that uh, Bill has taken uh, the lawyer to? Can you quickly tell me? Yes. Who's going to tell me? Nishtha, Asta, Himani. So where has he gone to? Yes, yeah, so he's gone to the poker place. He's, they've gone to the barber. Then they went to another barber. Then they go to the pool room. And one or the other, after they followed him to so many places, but he was not found. What was the pattern? Wherever they went, it seemed he had been here. Lutkins had been there and had just left that place, right? And how was the hack driver Bill helpful? How? Yes, he took him from one place to the other. Very good. Uh, yes, Arthik. And what else? What about his company? What kind of a person was he? He was, friendly. he was friendly in nature. And he would talk about the villagers. He would give his opinion. And he kept the lawyer entertained. Okay? Right. So let's just continue. We'll read one more paragraph and then we'll stop for the day. I know that Bill's helpfulness to the young fellow from the city was not entirely a matter of brotherly love. It was not brotherly love. It was not for humanity that he was doing it. What was he doing it for? Money. I was paying him for his time. In the end, I paid him for six hours, including the lunch hour, at what was then a very high price. So lunch hour, because Bill would have been working during that time, but for the lawyer, he was free. So he paid for the lunch also. He paid for the lunch hour also. But he does not mind paying because this man is very nice. Helpful. Yes, yes, helpful and friendly. But he was no more dishonest than I. I charged the whole thing to the firm. So the lawyer is not worried. He's saying, I'm going to give the bill to my firm only. But it would have been worth paying him myself to have his presence. His cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing to a country boy like myself who was sick of the city. As we sat on the hilltop, looking over the pastures and creek which slipped among the trees, he talked of New Malian and painted a picture in words of all the people in it. Yes, boys. So during the lunch hour, what did Bill tell him? Told him about New Malian. 
the young lawyer he was tired of the city he wanted to come to the country he wanted to come to this small village and he said it's such a lovely place and the people are so nice he noticed everything but no matter how much he might laugh at people he also understood and forgave their foolishness he described the minister's wife who sang the loudest in church when she was most in debt he commented on the boys who came back from college in fancy clothes he told about the lawyer whose wife could never succeed in getting him to put on both a collar and a tie on the same day he made them all alive he knew the villagers so well he was talking about each one of them and he felt as if he knew them right on that day i came to know new million better than i did the city and to love it better so now the lawyer he really knows so much about this place and he thinks that i could